Question number one, Councillor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. Mr Mayor, I thank Councillor Osborne for his question. It's interesting, I was looking at um, Councillor Osborne's first question to last three council meetings. I didn't have the time to go further back. And I found that on all, on all three occasions, uh, his first question was exactly the same. Um, what have you done in the last cycle? Uh, it's a bit like asking the council to do Councillor Osborne's homework for him, because all what we did in the last cycle was printed in papers, uh, and presumably all members have copies of it. But the second half of his question, I mean, is, is important and interesting, because we are involved in making cost reductions simply because the last government spent beyond its means and we are paying the price of that action by the last government. What we have also done in, in, in making the cost reductions is to ensure that wherever possible we have protected the most vulnerable in our society and that is the hallmark of our service over the last 35 years that we have made sure that the people least able to bear the costs of the burden of, of cost reductions are protected and, and this time is no different. Councillor Osborne. Um, does the leader accept that uh, it isn't so much my homework that uh, is at stake here. By getting this question put in in this way it means that the answer is always in the same place all the time and it makes it easier and more transparent for the public to follow what's going on given how difficult it might be for members of the public to find their way through the council's papers in committee and secondly can you confirm something else for me when I ask this question I have several times re repeated a question about priorities and strategy in the face of recession uh, can you confirm that uh, when I've asked that question it has mostly not given me the straight answer that I wanted but we now have an answer because I find uh, when I've asked about priorities I find in the latest edition of Brightside an article called Building an Even Stronger Wandsworth Council sets out priorities for borough would you agree with me that it should say council sets out for priorities for bra brackets at last? Um, would you agree with me that uh, it's actually quite difficult to find the priorities in the article? And does it mean that the three priorities are the end of the first, uh, the last text paragraph, which says, uh, I paraphrase, jobs helping people into property ladder and to give children the best start in school. And actually, I'd quite like to know, it's got the council leader's byline on it. Did he actually write this article? Um, thank uh, Councillor Osborne for his uh, several supplementary questions. Uh, I, I am sure that there are hundreds of ones of the residents who are agog at his uh, questions and his uh, assistance to them in putting these facts in before them. The council, as he refers to the bright side, regularly puts the facts before the residents of Wandsworth and inev inevitably the residents of Wandsworth welcome the, the bi-monthly delivery of the bright side. And of course on this particular edition that he talks about, the three priorities mentioned are indeed our priorities and perhaps he could tell us whether they are not his priorities. Question two. No, I'd like you to move question two, please. Oh, question two, all right. I just thought there was a question thrown at me, Mr. Mayor, but never mind. Um, I'll go on to uh, question number two to the leader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, I thank um, Councillor Osborne for his second question. And, of course, I should start with by saying that the Mayor is, the Mayor for London is in the position he is in because, essentially, his government spent the money and push the burden of that uh, over expenditure onto the mayor and consequently the mayor is having to make some tough decisions but of course he is making tough decisions in a sensible way like anyone else in this situation would do to cut his cloth according to the resources he's got available and in the priorities that the mayor has proposed and they are all in draft form at the moment they're going out to wide consultation across london and inevitably there will be a meeting on on the 26th of february in this borough where we should have a chance to discuss this more fully i think 
Mr. Mayor, the one thing that I would remind members opposite and members on this side as well, that the Labour Party uh, sort of misjudged its campaign to save Lavender Hill. Uh, and you clearly see now that even in Mayor's draft proposals, there is no such thing as a threat to Lavender Hill Police Station. Uh, given the specific reference to Lavender Hill, can the leader confirm that in that case that Lavender Hill Police Station has now been taken off the provisional list for those stations that will be disposed of by the Metropolitan Police? And if it has not been taken off that list, is there some sort of confusion on the police side between the decision on the one hand to make Lavender Hill headquarters for the borough and the decision on the other hand to put it in principle on a list for disposal. We could do some clarification on that. Could I also ask about his answer? Will he just clarify where he says every ward will have a named sergeant? Will he uh, clarify that actually it's half a named sergeant in the Safer Neighbourhood team because all Safer Neighbourhood teams are going to have to share their sergeants with the ward next door as far as I understand it? And secondly, can we also confirm that uh, the size of the sa safer neighbourhood teams, when it comes to a minimum of a constable and a PCSO, that it is four officers down on the previous minimum, which was a sergeant, two PCs and three PCSOs. Um, would you also like to just answer one other thing, which is, oh, 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 listen, you've got to answer some questions. We come here to Councilor, ask and you've Cal got to answer Councilor some questions. Osborne. Councilor Osborne. And, and the Councilor question Burke. is, my final Ladies part and gentlemen, of the question can I have is, a bit of quiet, please? Final part of my question Councilor is... Councillor Osborne, is, one moment, please. At the beginning of the meeting, I read out some rubric and there was a very large clue. It was a supplementary question. I think by your own count, you're up to four supplementary questions in this supplementary question alone. I think we've had enough. Um, leader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, thank Councillor Osborne for his several supplementaries. Now, I just um, choose one, which is that, in effect, uh, what MOPEC have done is put proposals in front of us, and so he asks for clarifications from me. Well, what he needs to do is to read MOPEC's proposals, which are out to consultation, and he will in there find that the Lavender Hill Police Station is the one that they are proposing for 24-7 operation. So therein lies your answer. And if you want further clarification, perhaps you could take the evening out on the 26th of February. The one interesting thing, of course, also in, in, question, in, in, in response to these questions about the PCSOs and, and the sergeant per ward, is that at last MOPAC is uh, taking a lesson from this council, more for less. And what we are going to get is better policing, because the aim from this council is that we want more boots on the ground in order to tackle the issues of policing in this borough. We're not interested in the kind of architecture and detail of that sort. We want the outcomes that our residents want, which is less crime, more detection, and greater resilience in our police force. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Madden. Uh, would the leader agree with me that there's a touch of deja vu with the proposals that are being put forward by uh, MOPAC, particularly in relation to uh, neighborhood policing? And uh, does this reflect the system of neighborhood policing that was introduced in 1992 and worked particularly well in this borough and more effectively in Putney and Roehampton when a certain person uh, standing not a million miles from me um, was responsible for that uh, system and it worked very well. I, I thank Councillor Madden for his supplementary. In fact, we've had a discussion about uh, what was his experience when he was in charge of this bar and what a cracking good job he did when he was in charge of that part of this bar. Because what was interesting in his response was that the system proposed was a system that worked well then and it was a system that was wrecked by the previous mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor, sorry, I didn't declare an interest in the GLA, and as my husband is the elected member, I guess it's a pecuniary interest. And um, bearing in mind we've got a debate on transport, maybe he'll be named, so I apologise. And um, whilst we're still in the pantomime season, I presume you're saying it because he is behind you. <laughs> um, Councillor Mrs. Clay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question number three for the leader. 
Ms. Mayor, I thank Councillor um, Clay for her question. And once again, you know, it's, it is important that we remind ourselves that the policing resources that uh, Wandsworth has had have not always been to our liking and we have always asked for better resourcing of this borough and we continue to ask that. How police resources are allocated in, in, across London is to an extent a mystery and what we will be seeking from, from uh, MOPAC is clarity in how the, that resource allocation is made. It's also important that the boroughs that have a low crime record should not end up losing police resources because it is important that we've got to low crime rate because of good policing and by reducing police numbers we are in, in risk of getting to, to a worse place. Mr. Mayor, uh, members would be interested to know that yesterday Simon Jenkins wrote an article in the Evening Standard talking about policing challenge in the borough, in, in, in London. And he essentially sums up the, 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 the need for the police is to be more of them on the ground. More police on the streets is what people want. That is what these people in this borough want. This is, that is what this council wants. Supplementary. Councillor Mrs Clay. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, do you, does the leader think that the campaign being waged by the Guardian and the rhetoric coming from the opposition members in this council is causing worry amongst local residents? I thank Councillor Clay for her supplementary. She's absolutely right in, 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 in identifying that campaign by the Guardian. What the local paper has come up with is a, a map. You could make any map you like if you are, have the right to choose the boundaries that you want to draw. They have chosen their boundaries to make the story. In essence, they are trying to scare people into thinking that there will be nothing in that huge area that they have drawn up. What is important for responsible newspapers and responsible members in this council is to reassure people that whilst the, the mayor is grappling with the challenges of the budgets, reductions on the police force, that he is coming up with the solutions that will work to the advantage of people. It is important that responsible people reassure the members of public and wherever possible press for a, a, a better action in, on, in, in favor of our residents. Councillor Mrs. Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I must say I'm quite shocked at the leader's res response on that issue. He started in his previous question by referring to cuts and the need for cuts, and then in, uh, only 20 seconds later starts talking about the irresponsibility of the press. And frankly, how on earth can you say that you will be pressing for more police on the beat when, the, when we've just n noted that the number of safe and neighbourhood team sergeants is going to be halved and the number of PCs and PCSOs is going to be reduced from five to two in every team? This is a reduction. Local people have already noticed they don't need the press to tell them about it. You need to be answering to local people, don't you? Of course we need to answer to local people and indeed we answer to local people on a regular basis. One of the things that actually local people do say is crime is not addressed by police officers sitting in rooms talking to people in warm evenings. That is not what catches crime. What catches crime is policemen on action on the streets. And that is what we will be pressing both MOPAC and the Metropolitan Commissioner for. We want better resources on our streets, not in meeting rooms. Councillor Carpenter. Question number four to the leader. Um, Mr. Mayor, I thank um, Councillor Carpenter for his um, question. Um, can I just start by saying that elsewhere in the bundle of questions there is a uh, reference to winter gritting um, carried out in the borough over the last, um, uh, last month. Can I at this point commend our staff for doing an excellent job uh, I think ones with roads and payments were gritted to a far, far better standard than any else, anywhere else. And a number of visitors to the borough have commented favorably on how we dealt with it. Yeah. And of course, what comes with winter is gritting and inevitably what follows is potholes. Councillor Carpenter's point is whether we are resourcing uh, the addressing of pothole issue adequately. Yes, we are. And if necessary, we will resource it even better. I think uh, we have shown over the years that road maintenance is one that, although from time to time has faced challenges, but our roads are maintained to a far better standard than elsewhere. And just turning on the, on the, on the sort of part C of his question, 
there are sort of figures of um, the um, sums paid out. What I am assured is that vast amount of that money is actually given over to the lawyers who chase those who have had an unfortunate accident in order to line their pockets. Vast amounts of this money is lining lawyers' pockets rather than pockets of our residents. Council Carpenter. Um, I just think this budget is totally inadequate. Um, within 100 yards of my house, there are three large potholes which open up every year and are patched every year, and they're patched inadequately. And this is true right across the borough. And what we need to do is to have a properly resourced budget for this and fix them properly rather than having to keep fixing them every year. So would the leader please review this budget with a view to increasing it? I thank um, Councillor Carpenter for his supplementary. And I trust that he has um, taken the time to identify those uh, potholes and reported them. Uh, because if he has, they will be on a schedule that the officers will timetable and attend to. One of the other things that he might also take opportunity to do with discussing with officers is the whole way in which the pothole repair works. Because in my years, when I was in charge of the transportation highways issue, what I was told was that not every pothole can be repaired immediately as members of the public might require. The weather has to come to a point where it no longer will add to the damage and thereafter repair would be carried out. And if there are stretches of roads which are going to be resurfaced relatively soon, then there is a patch repair awaiting a full resurfacing. As for the budget review point, I take his point entirely, and in fact I alluded, that, alluded to that in my answer earlier. Councillor Locker. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the leaders hinted at, um, in this financial year, we've been able to dedicate an additional half a million pounds to carriage re resurfacing. Would you agree with me that that's thanks to the very prudent financial management we have here in Wandsworth that we've been able to do this? And uh, I appreciate his commitment that if in the coming year we also have further inclement weather, um, that he will look at doing something similar again. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank Councillor Locker for his supplementary. He's absolutely right to draw attention to the, the prudent uh, budget management because it's always been our practice to, to allow for funds to deal with inclement weather and if the weather is particularly severe to have a review in order to make sure that uh, the portal program doesn't lag behind. It is important that we don't throw money at a problem before we quantify the problem and it's quite right that when we have quantified the problem we look at the budget again. There's no, it'd be no different this year as it's been no different in the past. Councillor Miss Nichols. Question five to the leader. Uh, Mr. Bayer, I thank um, Councillor Nichols for her question. And I, first of all, commend her for what is an exceptionally great campaign for on behalf of our residents. Uh, it shows that Councillor Nichols walks with her people and, and talks with her people and actually uh, advances their cause. What is important for the residents of, Wands uh, of Roehampton is to feel safe in their roads. And it's quite important also that not only the tenants, the tenants, the visitors, and the shopkeepers who are involved in the sale of alcohol behave responsibly. And if they don't, that this council takes action not only just against the street drinkers, but all the others who give, uh, give uh, succor to that uh, menace. First supplement. Councillor Miss Nichols. Thank you, for the leader, for his answer. Um, Whilst it's vital we take a zero tolerance approach to rooting out those committing the antisocial behaviour, we also have a moral duty to provide the care and support necessary for those individuals to turn around their often tragic and chaotic lives. Could the leader therefore expand upon the measures we have in place to do just that? I thank Councillor Nichols for her supplementary and once again, if I may say so, a, a thoughtful supplementary because it is important not only to enforce the rules but also to help those who, who need help. 
One of the things in the aspirations uh, agenda for Roehampton is to we want to raise uh, the health outcomes of the, of the local residents and of course um, poor health outcomes as a result of alcohol abuse is a key, key uh, element of what we need to address. It is important that we provide help and support for those uh, who who have become sadly addicted to, to alcohol, but at the same time give them opportunities to, to repair their lives. And once again, turning to the aspirations program, that is, our ambition is to provide job opportunities, training and skill opportunities, so that people can be diverted from a, a useless activity. Councillor Carpenter. Second supplementary. Um, can I uh, welcome uh, Councillor Nichols' belated conversion to the cause of an alcohol-free zone in uh, Roehampton, which the Labour Party in Putney has been campaigning for for four years and has fallen on deaf ears in this uh, chamber. Uh, so, um, and I also welcome uh, the leader's uh, comment that uh, we should be dealing both with carrot and with stick, that we should be supporting those who've got uh, alcohol or drug related problems as well as uh, implementing exclusion zone. Uh, would the leader agree with me that there is uh, more joy in heaven over one sinner who repenteth than over 99 just men? Um, I thank Councillor Carpenter for his as ever gracious response to members opposite. Um, he is always complimentary about people who work hard for the residents uh, and is always warm in his embrace of good that we do on the side. Um, he does f find that the words fail him uh, to, to be as generous as he should do. But I'm grateful for the biblical quotation and uh, sometime I might spend some time uh, uh, refreshing my knowledge of it. Uh, the time for questions to the leader is now over.